<laughs> so Corey kills a kills a thug, and then buys a used car and uh, begins you know begins to cross the river Styx. He begins begins headed towards a little place called the Red Circle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, God, Corey and Vogel coming together in this movie is the my favorite meet cute in movie history. They're so in love with each other; it's crazy. <laughs> it, I, honestly, it reminds me of like anime. <laughs> It reminds me of like two yes. two characters in like an anime like yeah. team up. It's like Zoro Zoro and Luffy from uh, <laughs> One Piece, literally. It's just circumstances compel them. So basically, uh, Vogel. Okay, uh, criminal tip number three. Everyone knows if you're being chased by dogs, you'd like to you go you go across a stream or river. But what do you do? It's cold as shit out, and you're gotta wearing clothes. Mm-hmm. Vogel uh, like strips down, basically bundles all of his clothes up into a tight little package. And then just tosses it across the river. After then goes through and then gets dressed in dry clothes on the other side. I yeah, that was a really, uh, really sick little awesome touch. Uh, uh, little, little, little tips and tricks, life hacks. And not only Melville's movies are very cold in their color palette, but they are they're also just cold in that they all take place. You know, you see in characters' winter. breath. It's always <laughs> yeah. it's always raining or snowing. It's always very damp and gray out. And I. Yeah, it's this is probably one of the colder scenes that, uh, um, you know, he Vogel is at this diner, like trying the trunks of all these cars so he can escape this dragnet that's closing in on him in the trunk of a stranger's car. So he's trying all the trunks to see if there's one that's unlocked. And lo and behold, Elaine Delon's trunk. And it's very subtle, but like you see him eating lunch and you see the trunk of his car open and yeah. close. And you're like, wait, does, does he know he's in there? Yeah. And then earlier he stopped at a police checkpoint because obviously there's this huge dragnet for the escaped convict. Vogel. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, could you please open the trunk? And he does. Sure. He's got a, he's got a gun in there. Like he's got two the, guns in he's there. Got two guns <laughs> yeah. in there. But, you know, he this this is Corey. He plays it off. He cool plays it so cool. As They're a just cucumber. in a doctor's bag in there. So, yeah. so this time, like, you're not really sure whether he knows he has an escaped convict who's also armed now with the guns that he has in his trunk. Yeah. When he gets stopped at another checkpoint, once again, we like I, we don't know. Like he, he could just be like, "Yeah, sure, I'll open your trunk." And there's an escape convict there, mm-hmm. but he plays it off so cool and pretends that like he doesn't have the key or the trunk is stuck or something like it's that. It's like a new car, and he's like, um, mm, "They must have forgotten to give me the key to the trunk." And you're like, "That's not true. What is he talking about?" <laughs> so he just plays it cool, and he they, he goes through the, the the checkpoint, and just the most beautiful. Criminal mindset. He pretends he pretends he doesn't have the key, and then drives into a, a field to convince what I regard as maybe my one of my favorite scenes in any movie ever. Yeah, it's so good. He opens the truck and he, gets, <laughs> he or he just like he, he like he walks away. He parks the car in the field in a, in this like you know beautiful grim bleak <laughs> bleak ass a French mud, country yeah, field mud farm. <laughs> just stands a few away from the cars and just goes, "Okay, you can come out now." Yeah, <laughs> because he, he knew the guy. He knew he was in there the whole time, and Vogel just appears. He's got a gun. He's like, "What the fuck's going on?" <laughs> but here, gentlemen, you are now in the red circle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just like the way the way this scene cuts back and forth between the two of them, and it goes from like 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 sort of shot reverse shot of them looking at each other to this kind of like uh, wide wide screen panoramic view of their car in them in, in the middle of this field, mm-hmm. and it's just like. They they like they they sort of recognize what's going on, and then um, of course the most important thing to do, gotta smoke a cigarette. They share a cig. <laughs> they share a cig, and it's like my my favorite detail is that um d- like um Vogel is pointing the gun at Delon and is at Corey and it's yeah. just like um at Corey's like cool as ice lighting a cig and he's like, I mean it's kind of rude. I pulled over so you could get some air and then like lights the cig <laughs> and throws. Corey or throws Vogel the pack of cigarettes and he catches it and then throws him the lighter, but he can't hold the lighter, the cigarettes and the gun at the same time. <laughs> so he's like holding all three and then just like puts the gun away and lights the cigarette. But but, but, th- but this is one of the few scenes where you do get a little bit of music. Yeah. And it's so effective. I like, so when I first saw this movie and then again, when I watched it for today, th- this is a truly one of those scenes in movies where like, I can't explain it, but like I'm levitating. Yeah, off off my couch or out of my seat when I'm watching this when I'm watching this scene, it's just like you are now standing in the red circle, the cool guys club, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. You may start your cigarette smoking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> my favorite my favorite part is that like the 
like the end of the scene, Vogel is like halfway done with his cigarette and he's like, all right, let's let's go to Paris. And then with his lit cigarette still dangling from his mouth, gets back in the trunk of the car. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you? Is psycho. <laughs> Just like, well, I mean, he's still on the limb. <laughs> smoking okay. out the trunk, though. <laughs> so funny. Uh, I, 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 I said, OK, so it's like that scene puts me through the Stargate. Yeah. But then we get another scene that is just like so much quieter and less cool. Yeah. But for me it is pure cinema. We, we get a little bit of the um, personal life of Inspector Mate, the cop, who comes home and he's got kitties and he, he has loves three them. beautiful he's got three cats. cats. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just, once again, just observing behavior of this cop who's just like quiet, diligent, and like dedicated to his job above all else. But he yeah. comes home and he's just like, just starts feeding his cats. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, once again, a very blue interior. Um, but it's just, I. I can't explain why. It's just this little quiet moment of Mate and just seeing what his personal life is like. Yeah. Which is that like he doesn't have one. Yeah. He's got his cats. That's it. Yeah. And it's it's very like, you know, in it's like the contrast between the criminals are, you know, it's a much more dangerous life, but there is a an honor there is an honor amongst thieves in a lot of Melville's movies. And oh, in a lot of them there is not. But you know, well, it's it's seen as there's no more. You're right in the saying it's amoral in that it's very like there's no prescriptive like, you know, it's not like all thieves are evil or all like cops are good or all thieves are good or like, you know, yeah. it's very case by case. And like, you know, even the um the chief, the chief inspector in this general. Yeah. yeah, the inspector, like the head of the, you know, uh, fr French, you know, in, in, uh, internal affairs, inspective, inspector division, the guy who smokes the pipe or whatever. Yeah. Who, who is like, he's a very interesting character because he's sort of like, he takes a um, Matai to, you know, he, he sort of like uh, reads him, you know, puts puts his ass on notice because like he has puts the screws to him. Yeah. The chief has a very simple, very simple philosophy of the law and it's that all men are guilty. Yeah. And I really like that because like the, for portraying outlaws, he would adopt a like an alternate ethical universe. Mm -hmm. But the moral and ethical universe that you know people who are not career criminals live in is just being afraid of the law. Yeah, but you're afraid of the law because everyone is guilty. Like that is the view of the law towards everyone. The law assumes yeah. that all men are guilty, which is something that will be returned to later yeah. in this movie. And in his eyes, but I don't like, think that's necessarily Melville or any like. No, it's like it, just the it's police. It's not his point of view. This is just yeah. Yeah, it's like the the chief in this universe is operating from that supposition, and it's like you know, it's kind of the way I see it is that the this other cop Mate is getting slowly convinced of that yes he is but he by the end he is convinced of it but there's like other things from the sides of the criminals that he doesn't know like their friendship and all these like these little michael, beautiful michael man owes a lot to yes movies. Exactly, exactly because like it's like melville like exactly with man is just so laser focused on like men at work yeah and then it's always like that uh, criminals at work and then the people who hunt them at mm -hmm. work. And it is very clear that like there are superficial differences between the two of them, but they're both kind of programmed. They're both kind of the same kind of guys. Yeah. Um, okay. The next thing I want to talk about is like if, if, if Vogel and Corey, see, here's the beauty of being in the red circle. Nothing has to be said between two men of uh, honor and criminal tendencies. Yeah. They just get it. Yeah. They get each other. They found each other, and they're just on the same wavelength. For which the we see beautifully episode, when as uh, Corey is driving to Paris, uh, Rico's thugs track him down and drive him off the road, mm -hmm. pull him over, and just like walk him into the woods to shoot him. Sorry, boys, you weren't counting on two two gentlemen being in the red circle. <laughs> yes. Once again, you just Vogel stepped into the red circle. What, Vogel doesn't even know what's going on. He's in the trunk of the car. Yeah, and like you know, like the goons are just getting ready to to execute his new friend. But he just gets out of the car and just caps both of them. For the with full no episode, yeah. like subscribe at patreon.com slash Chapo like Trap House. Shot each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just knows exactly what to do. At the, like, it just, they don't need to say, help me or thanks for that. They're just yeah. like, nods. And there's, yep. yeah, there's an amazing moment of like, um, and this happens a lot in, this happens again in Army of Shadows of like, 
someone who knows that they're dead, but just has like a kind of taciturn. For the full episode, subscribe at patreon.com slash chapo trap house. Trap.